th- this is the Revelation 12 sign. We saw it um, where the great sign appeared in heaven, and we had uh, uh, Jupiter basically in uh, coming out of the womb. We had the sun. Of course, the moon's at the feet because that's when it, that's when Feast of Trumpets occurs, when the moon is sighted. And the moon can't be sighted before that because it's in the sun's glare. And then, of course, we had the alignment of Mercury, Mars, and Venus, uh, along with Leo there. Uh, this th- this uh, alignment had never happened before in the history of, of mankind. We, I mean, we had people that looked back through us astronomical programs, and they, they, they simply could never match it up. Right. So... So uh, for a lot of people, this just came and went, and uh, and they really didn't recognize it or, or whatever. For the watchers, though, for us, we, we saw this as a very uh, important event, that, and and even so much more important because directly after this, uh, events occur, and then directly after those events occur, the word harpazo is mentioned. And so to me, as a watcher, I had to sound the alarm because that's that's just my duty. And I didn't know whether or not they were all going to be fulfilled at the same time or not. Now, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. We know that this was just the first part and that there's more that, that that's going to be coming. But, of course, we, we, we didn't know that uh, whether or not they were all going to happen in succession right after each other, uh, because that does tend to happen sometimes. And, of course, we have been warned that when these things happen, they will happen quickly. Mm-hmm. Now, Quickly is 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 a subjective term, correct? I mean, quickly can mean two seconds for a, a one year old uh, that didn't get their food, or it could mean years and years to uh, to, for example, Elijah, who had to wait, I believe, twenty years between prophecies at one point. So there, there there's all kinds of waiting that that goes on, and um, now we're we're basically waiting uh, for the next um, for the next event, which of course, would be Revelation 12, 3. And you'll notice that what I do is I look at the Greek. <laughs> so the English words are great. And uh, the English words spell out salvation and sanctification, provide you with stories, provide you with the history of the world, provide you with all kinds of great things. But God said to those who really want to dig into something, you've got to search. And it's exactly what you just said a little bit ago, which is you have to work. you got to dig into it. you got to try to figure it out. So I wanted to, I mean, I've been searching and studying the rapture for uh, 25, 30 years now. I grew up in the Lutheran church. I got a really good foundation there in terms of all the stories and all the things, but the meat just wasn't there in the church. Went to another church. The meat was, was even less there. Great for fellowship, but I had to go outside of that structure and, and dig myself. I had to go in, I had to read, I had to search, I had to find, I had to seek. And what it's really done is it opened up a lot of, lot of doors in terms of provide, getting knowledge on certain things. And I was really, um, really interested in the rapture because the church never taught it. And so I thought, well, if they're not going to teach it, then there must be something there. So, so what I did is I started looking into it really deep. And I, I looked into it for years and years and years. And then the Revelation 12 sign, um, Scotty started talking about it in 2011. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And he first had it as a mid-trip event in, tw- in 2017 with the rapture occurring, I believe, in 2014, um, in, the, yeah, in the spring of 2014, uh, around the blood moon time. And so, uh, of course, that came and went. But then when the sign came, there were a whole bunch of teachers that just dis- just dismissed it. Right. And 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 why they dismissed it is because we talked we talked about Revelation twelve five a lot and that there was a rapture there and they basically all said no 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 that's Jesus and I thought to myself okay well let me dig into this and find out if that's Jesus or not so the the first two verses before um, Revelation twelve five are Revelation twelve three and four this is after the sign that we saw in twenty seventeen and there's another sign that comes and a dragon with seven heads. Uh, and seven, um, seven uh, royal crowns is there. And 12.4 states that he cast down a third of the, of the demons to earth. And the tail of the third of the stars cast them down to the earth and to bring about the child, you know, to, to bring the, the, the woman who is in travail, who's going to bring forth the technon, which is a key word. Technon means a body of adopted people, men and women. In other words, people who have adopted, who've been adopted. 
I, I don't think there's a better word for us. <laughs> we have been adopted. We've been grafted in. We are a body of, uh, uh, yeah, we're a body of men and women. We are uh, children of God, and we are adopted children of God. Um, and the the devil wants to devour us, just like what you said. There's a lot of pressure on us, getting more and more and more and more. And of course, that's what we're be, that's what we've been told. So it's not a surprise to us that we're going through this. So you'll notice here that yes, it, it looks like the that the third of the angel or angels slat basically demons because they're the ones who follow Satan. They're going to be cast down to the earth. And if you look all over the place, this world has been desensitized to an alien invasion, period. I mean, th there are many people, many people in the highest ranks of the Catholic Church. And I don't, I'm, I'm not disparaging Catholics because there are plenty of Catholics that don't like what they're doing and actually, you know, believe and look for themselves and, and do this. So I'm not, I'm not disparaging that. But what I'm disparaging is that the people at the top of the Catholic Church who are setting up um, um, uh, astronomical structures all over the place to look for a savior in the sky? That's right. <laughs> That's the, the, that, that to me is where, and when they say, yeah, if they come and they know more about God than I do, sure, I'll be baptized by them. <laughs> Those are your leaders in the church. I, you know, to me, that that, that is exactly what is going to happen. And the, and, and, it's so clear to 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 all of us who see that um, that the rapture has been has been taught as maybe a secret event, you know that no, yeah. no, and it's just going to happen and all of a sudden. Da, 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 da. But you know what? The Bible doesn't say that. Actually, the Bible says that we will know that the day is coming. We will know that 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 something has happened, and that they won't, but we will. There's a lot. There's a big distinction between they and we in the Bible. Multiple, multiple places in the in the New Testament show that we know things that they don't know. And that's pretty obvious if you just look at the comments on Twitter and on YouTube and whatever. There are a lot of things people don't know that we know. We have a very, very powerful, power, very powerful in this because we have a lot of knowledge that they don't know. There's a whole spiritual realm that's going on. We're not fighting against people. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against what's inside of them, which is evil and darkness. And in us, it's not there. So we can quickly see the difference between us and them. And they have a different fate than we do. We're not all in the same boat. And even Christians are not in the same boat with other Christians because there are groups of Christians that have that find salvation at different times. And the word lays that out as well. Here's verse five. She brought a, a, forth a son to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. That's exactly what it says in Revelation 6. It says that we who overcome will rule all the nations with a rod of iron. There's plenty of places that say that we're going to be rulers, priests, and kings. Uh, and that's, that, that is exactly a correlation to that. And notice here, and the child was herpathi, which is a, a past tense version of herpato, which when you tell a story, you say, oh, yeah, they were caught up, right? So the child was caught up, the technon, there it is again, to God and the throne. So tell me, how is that possible that that's Jesus? It's not possible. And I'll tell you why, and I'll show you why. Because Jesus cannot be raptured. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> the definition of Harpazzo is that it's, it's a, in Strong 726, it says to take an open display of force snatch up suddenly and decisively. Okay, this is not a secret. This is something that is a display of force by an outside object, an outside person or entity or whatever it may be. That entity is going to exert a force on us that we cannot refuse. Now, tell me one time when Jesus decided, you know what, uh, I can't refuse that. I, have, I must do this or I must do that unless it was from the Father. Okay. It's not possible. Jesus can't be raptured. He wasn't raptured. And John, you just mentioned that. Right. When he, when he ascended, the angels didn't tell them, hey, why are you looking uh, at this? This is exactly how you're going to go too. No, right. no, no. They said this is exactly how he's going to return. Right, right. And when does he return? At the rapture? No, he doesn't set foot on the ground at the rapture. He's in the clouds. He blows the trumpet. We come up to him. <laughs> It's a totally different thing. And, and the word that's used. 
the word that's used there is not harpazo. Amen. There's plenty of times where it's used uh, harpazo. Here, I, I wrote them all down here, but you know what? Uh, it, better than this synopsis, I'm actually going to show you the text. Now, you said there was two times in the New Testament where, where harpazo is. It's actually 12, and I'll show you all 12 of them. 12 is a great number, too, by the way. It sure is. <laughs> so let me show you. Number one, uh, we just went through Revelation 12, 5. But the first one here is, you'll notice here, Harpazi snatches away. This, this is a story about the seed that gets snatches away. See, everyone hearing the kingdom and they don't understand, the evil one comes and snatches them away by force. He takes them. There's no root to what they say. And what happens is you'll tell maybe somebody will stumble upon something about Jesus and they won't dig into it. And you know what happens then. Satan sends his minions in and says, oh, what about this? What about Buddha? What about that? You can't believe this and that. And then, bam, snatches them away. Number two, yeah. John 10, 12. John 10, 12 is a great one because there's a hired servant, right? And he's watching the sheep. You know what a hired servant is. He really doesn't care about the sheep. What he cares about is the money that he's getting to watch the sheep. Yeah. And so what happens is, guess what happens? The wolf comes and our hired <laughs> snatches them away. Yeah. Yeah. He takes them. So there's another, there's another evil harpazo where the evil one can snatch people away from what they believe in. Mm. Jude, number one, uh, Jude 23. I don't, I don't know why it's called Jude 123. There's only one chapter. So it's Jude 23. Jude 23 is a great one because guess what you can do in order to uh, hopefully alleviate a lot of that going on. You can save them out of the fire. Harpazones. Ah. Zontes. That's snatching others and showing them mercy. So you snatch them away from the snatcher. <laughs> That's a great verse. That's awesome. Uh, Second Corinthians 12, 2 is another good one. So there's a man in Christ years ago, 14 years ago, and in the body or out of the body, don't know. Of course, Paul's talking about himself because he's not a boaster. Paul gets what? Harpak jena. Yeah. Harpak jenta. Having been caught up, Paul gets a, a, a sneak preview of the rapture. He gets caught up. And of course, God has to do that to him and give him a sneak preview because Paul is the one who discloses the rapture to us. Amen. Acts 8, 839. So this one is when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord, here Pazin. Carried them, carried away Philip. Remember, Philip was discipling to someone, and God said, "You know what, Philip? You're done here. You're going to go over there, and I'm going to move you there. You have no say in the matter. I'm going to do it." And Philip was moved. Philip was snatched. Philip was caught up. Philip was moved. That's another harpazo. Matthew twelve twenty nine. This is this is just this is amazing. See, when you dig in, you can really figure out what harpazo means. People say, oh, rapture's not in the Bible. The word rapture's not in the Bible. Okay. Well, we didn't translate harpazo, which was rapie or rapio in Latin, to rapture. We translated it to caught being caught up or caught away because it's more descriptive. If you just say rapture, people have to know what the definition of rapture means. And so they have to look into that. That's difficult. So if you just tell them what the definition means, being mm -hmm. caught up, that is rapture. So people who say that you you, you have to have uh, the Bible says you have to have an answer for everything, and, and if you dig deep enough, you will. This one's great. How how is able anyone to enter the house of a strong man, and the goods of him, harpazai, to snatch them away? How is it possible? You can't. Unless you bind him up first, unless you, unless you basically move him out of the way and say, you are not a part of this anymore, and you can't, in, you can't be involved into the force that I'm exerting on you and your stuff. This is very crucial because it shows that a person needs to be basically incapacitated in order to be raptured. I mean, the person can't decide, I'm not going to go. Sorry, I can't. You have to be bound up. In other words, you have to be a non-believer in order to not be raptured. 
That's a really critical verse right there. John 10, 28 is a great one. I gave them eternal life that no one should perish, the age and no one uh, out of the hand of me. And guess what? No one's going to harpasi. No one's going to snatch them away from the people that I have. That's what Jesus said. Amen. He used the word harpazo. <laughs> no walk in that picture. <laughs> yeah. John 6, 15. Jesus, therefore, knowing that they're about to come and seize him, that they might make him a king. Guess what he did? He left because they were going to harpazine him. <laughs> they were going to snatch him away. But Jesus can't be snatched away. Jesus knows when his time is and when his time is not. Amen. So guess what he did? He went through the midst of them and bailed out because that he wasn't ready to go. He's not going to go on a throne in his first coming. He, that was never his submission. His mission was to die for our sins and to rise and conquer death so that we could have eternal life. That, but, of course, that was all missed on the people in charge back then because they, they had plenty of rules and plenty of regulations. He's breaking this and he's doing that. And, and, and by the way, I want my money. And if he does this, maybe I won't be in power anymore. And this is not good. So guess what? You know, we need to kill this guy. I mean, it's pretty obvious that's what, that, that's what took place back then. And then, of course, one of the, the key verses is First Thessalonians 4.17. And that is the living who are remaining with those who are uh, dead will be caught up. It's a difficult word in Greek. But basically, it's in the future, will be caught away in the clouds. Yeah. So th those are all 12 areas. And then when you go back to 12.5, it becomes very, very important that, that you see all of these examples of where people were taken, people were seized. Paul was seized by, um, uh, by, by, uh, P by, by uh, the guards so that he wouldn't have to get uh, killed by the people. Uh, he, he started a, an interesting little fight there between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. So it kind of put a little distraction there. But the ruler took a look down and saw that Paul was going to get killed by this mob. And so what he did is he sent in um, his, uh, his guards to seize Paul and basically to take him out of there. This is Acts 23.10. He, um, he is ordered by somebody else in power and he became safe. It's a representation of our future circumstances. So aside from Moses, Moses's body was disputed over. It's, it's, it's a question of whether or not he actually died or not. Um, it's possible that he died. I, I, I'm kind of in the belief that he did die and that Satan said, okay, it's my body now. And, uh, and, and God basically sent his messenger and said, no, I, I need him. And Satan's like, well, that's against the rules. And God's like, well, these are my rules. So I do whatever the heck I want. And I want Moses because Moses is critical. Moses appeared on the mountain tra Mount of Transfiguration. I believe Moses is going to be one of the two witnesses along with Elijah, who was, who was actually taken away in a, in, in a whirlwind. And, and they saw him and he knew that the day was coming. He knew that it was happening. And Elisha, his buddy, also knew too and said, well, if I stick around for this, I'm going to get a double portion of faith. So the, those type of examples we have all over the New and Old Testament. And uh, to me, it was crucial that we understood that Revelation 12, 5 includes the rapture of the believers and not Jesus. And that was very crucial for me to understand that Revelation 12 is really a basic, uh, is, is an overview of a, of a period of time. That starts with the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 and ends actually at, at the end. So it, it, people who read Revelation chronologically from start to finish and don't look at other things are really missing out on a lot of good stuff and really missing out on the context and the story. And there are plenty of people actually these days who are doing these studies and saying, hey, you go from here and guess what? Here's the context of it over here in this verse of Revelation or this if these events are happening while these events are happening in a different chapter, but they're from a different perspective for different groups of people. Really cool stuff. Revelation is an extremely difficult book, but it is the only book that gives you a blessing for reading it. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I've been blessed a lot by reading it, as you can probably tell, that the, the knowledge that you get is 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 so powerful and so amazing that you can take a look at these things and not have to listen or believe 
things that maybe you've been taught for 30 years from people who taught it for maybe even over a thousand years. We Amen. know uh, so much more. We know so much more now than what they did back then. It's not even funny. We are so close to the end here. Amen. I can't imagine somebody in 400 AD saying, yep, the aliens are going to come and get us all. And they're going to start trying to devour us. I don't think that was happening back then, but right. we can certainly see that happening now. Yeah. So, so go ahead. Things have changed a lot. And so that, that, that's my presentation, basically, and my and, and my knowledge transfer of, of, of basically where I think that, that we stand in, in the timeline of things and and where uh, and what the next stage is, basically. I believe that the next stage is that there will be a, a, a disclosure. The, the, the third of the angel uh, angels, which are demons, mm. are going to descend prior to us being raptured because they have to try to devour us. That's what it says clearly in these uh, in these verses mm. that that we are um, that we are going to be the, uh, the ones who are going to be persecuted by these people. We are going to be the ones who are saying, hey, how can you not believe these people? These these people from outer space, they're here to help us. They're right in front of you. You can see them with your very own eyes. Can't you believe it? And the answer is no. We believe that they're oh, sure they believe they exist, but that's, they're not. They say they are. That's the reason for the the harpazo, brother. That's absolutely. That's, Otherwise, that's, we would get devoured, right? I mean, we we have to be caught up because we have to have an escape. Otherwise, we're going to go through the trial. We're going to go through the testing. And I'm telling you, I don't need a test of my faith, okay? My faith is solid. I, If anybody comes to me and says, hey, what about this or what about this? I got a word that says otherwise. I got a word that says the truth. Mm -hmm. So do I need to go through that? Do I need to be persecuted by the harlot system and the, and the church that's to come and to say that you have to worship these aliens and if you don't, we're going to kill you? Do I need to go through that? No, because you know why? Mm -hmm. Just like you guys I'm one of the wise virgins. And that goes back to that parable of the 10 virgins. There are five wise and there are five foolish. They're all saved, but they're not all saved at the same time because right. the five wise have the lamps full of oil, which is represented faith. They have the faith. The bridegroom comes and the, those who believe will be taken. You don't get a choice. You don't get to choose. Are you gonna go in the rapture? Who this and that? The Bible clearly state, states who's going to go in the rapture. It's the five wise virgins who are ready. Who it's it's not it's not that you're staying up all night going, is he coming? Is he coming now? No, it's about faith. Right. We have faith in Jesus. We don't have faith in another entity. Those people who are five foolish virgins will come to know the truth. But just like Thomas, they're going to need to have physical proof. Yeah. Thomas didn't believe. And for seven days, he was left out in the cold. Seven days, seven years. Yeah. Interesting. Many, many parallels between Thomas and believers who need proof. Well, guess what? When we're gone, that's going to be a lot of proof because yeah. they're going to see that harlot system persecute them yeah. and they're going to have to die for their faith. And if they make it through the harlot system, the harlot gets devoured. And then the beast system comes and then the angels come and say, look, if you take that mark, that's no good. You'll die. Blessed are those who do not take the mark and perish because they will have everlasting life. And that's another group of believers that actually get uh, beheaded and don't get resurrected again until um, right before the millennium. So there are plenty of, of different groups of Christians and different times when people come to faith. And some people just simply need to have proof. 